Dating Harry's Cardigan, and before we actually get started, I actually made some updates to my first video, and I also posted a video because people kept asking me about sizing and needles, so I really highly advise for you guys to watch that before you get started with this video. And in this day two, we are actually going to be doing two squares, but don't panic, because the stitching are really easy. I know yesterday's pattern could have been a, a bit overwhelming, but this time around we're actually going to pick up the pace, and it's a bit easier stitches, and we're going to get through it, and it's going to be really awesome, and you're really proud of yourself because you're going to have three squares. So I know you're excited to get knitting, I'm excited to get knitting, so let's get started. As I mentioned in my last video, we're gonna be working in panels, and that's why I told you not to take it off the needle or cut the yarn, because what I'm gonna be teaching y'all to do is to change colors. And in the long run, that just makes it easier because you don't have to worry about sewing every individual square. We're just gonna be sewing the panels together. And as you can see, we're not gonna waste any time sewing our squares together because all we're gonna be doing is sewing along the sides here until we have our sweater. As you can see here, we have our completed square from the last video. And what I'm gonna be showing you right now is how to change colors. Because as I mentioned before, we'll be working in columns to make it easier for ourselves in the long run. Okay, so I'm gonna take my green yarn, I'm gonna have it here with me. What I'm gonna do is act like I'm gonna be doing a knit stitch. So I'm gonna put my needle in from the front to the back, like we know with our knit stitch, but instead of picking up this orange color that's attached to the ball of yarn, I'm gonna pick up my green, and I'm gonna make sure that I have a decent tail, because we don't want short tails, because later when we start tucking in our, our yarn, it'll be just much easier. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap it around as if we're doing the knit, and like that. And then basically we can just go tightening, and I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit So we make sure we got our yarn from the ball and we're just doing a knit stitch. And we're gonna keep going. I like to do a row just because it's more secure. When I go back and finally secure that, those little tails that are hanging off. Just because sometimes I get scared that my stitches are gonna fall out. But if you're comfortable, you know, doing it right after, that's up to you. We're all doing what we're comfortable with because this is our sweater. We want it to look good, we want it to feel good. So here I am like halfway through my row. Always make sure that we're leaving enough room and if these are starting to kind of come undone we can just pull them to make sure they're a little closer to the, to the needle so they don't pop out. So we're not knitting at the tips because as I mentioned before that makes our stitches tighter and it can also cause our stitches to fall off. So there we have our color change. Now with that side that I mentioned before that we have here, what we're going to do is because we have our green tail and we have our orange tail still attached, we're going to go ahead and cut. So now we don't need our orange yarn anymore, so we're going to put that off to the side, and what we're going to do is literally just do a knot. There might be a more professional way of doing this, but I, th I found that to be the easiest. No professional knitter, no grandma that's been knitting for 90 years is going to come knocking down your door because you <laughs> did a knot. But we're going to secure that like that, and now we have our color change. And now all we have attached is our green yarn. And now, I wanted to explain something real quick. It's called the right side and wrong side of your work. So if we look, and this is why you should always have the sweater, the photo of the sweater pulled up, just as a reference. As we can see when we're changing, when the color changes from orange to green, there's no line. So as you can see here, there's a stitched line of green and then there's orange peeking out. Now, since the pattern of the sweater on the outside, the part that people can actually see, has no line, we know that this is the right side of our work. And then this is the wrong side. That will come in handy when we start sewing because we want to make sure that we sew our pieces correctly so that the inside isn't accidentally on the outside of our sweater. And so now, 
the green, what I did was a garter stitch. And I know that this particular hurdle stitch was probably kind of intimidating. Well, we're kind of in luck because the garter stitch is literally just knit stitches. So it's literally the easiest thing that we can do. And we already know how to do it. But just as a quick refresher, it goes in from the front to the back. We bring our yarn around, we pull it to the front, and we slip the stitch off. Now if you need, you know, a little bit more refreshing, you can always go back to my first video where I explained it a little more and did it maybe at a more slower pace. But basically all we're going to do for every single row until we get to what our size of our square should be is literally just knit stitches. So we're just going to keep doing that and trust me by the end of this sweater you're just going to have all this memorized and it's literally going to be no problem because since every square is going to be kind of the same it's just we're just going to keep going we're basically going to become experts on how to knit stitch and how to purl stitch because that's the only two stitches that we use to create our patterns so here we go and since these squares are very tedious, something that I like to do is always put on Netflix or Disney Plus and just, you know, have maybe the pattern on one side of my screen and the, you know, the TV playing on the other. I'm pretty sure that I watched the entirety of Disney Plus. I was kind of wondering if Disney Plus was going to send me a email saying, hey girl, are you okay? Because you're watching a lot of TV. But <laughs> it's just something that I like to do so I'm not over here in silence. But if you work in silence because you want to really be concentrated, that's okay too. I didn't get to watch TV until I was sure of my stitches. So it was lots of silence, but that's okay. So here we are. This is already our second row and we're just doing our knit stitches. And see, we're already turning our work over. See, we're already on the... We're already again on the front side of our work where the little line isn't kind of interrupting our colors. And there we have our third row and we're just going to keep going until we have what we need. So my particular square is six inches which is the width and then the height is five and a half so we're going to keep knitting until we get to the top depending on your square or where you need to stop. That's why you should always have this as a reference on the side so that you can be measuring or if you're more comfortable you know using a ruler something to actually measure it out you can have that as well. So we're coming into our last row for this second square, which you should be very proud of yourself because you have one more square than you did the day before. And if you see that my yarn is running out, it's not because I cut it, it's just that this was leftover yarn from when I did my own sweater and I used it so I wouldn't waste any materials, but you should be fine with your yarn because you've just started. So don't cut your yarn at all. And we're about to get to the end of this green square so that we can switch colors again because we're doing our black square. And the black square is just gonna be a tiny bit different because it is a different pattern, but I will explain more when we get there. And we have our square. Now, if you see that your square, we're gonna turn our work, if you see that your square is looking big and you're probably thinking oh no like I must have measured wrong or something do not panic because you know when you're knitting it just tends to look a little big but when you put 
put it and you oh, put it the wrong way. <laughs> and you actually squish it together and when it's not all stretched out, it should be the size of your square. And I'm also going to mention when we get to sewing, you're technically going to be losing these first stitches like this first line right here on both sides, but don't worry about that now. We're gonna get to that when we start actually sewing our panels together and you're gonna see what I mean. So that's not something to worry about now. Now we're just focusing on getting our squares. So we are going to be changing now to black and we're gonna do the same exact thing that we did here, except this one's gonna be a little different because if you see on the jacket, you know it's a completely different pattern a type of stitch and that particular one is called a seed stitch. Now a seed stitch is knit one, purl one. Now we already did that here, so we're gonna do that with the black square. So you should all be you should already be kind of familiar with doing you know one knit stitch, one purl stitch, one knit stitch until you get to the very end of the row. And the good thing about that is that that's literally the only thing you're gonna be doing. It's a one row like repeat the pattern is only doing that until you get to the size of your square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did last time to change colors, and it's gonna be like as if we're doing a knit stitch. And I should probably mention this before we start, that when we attach our squares like we did before, we're just gonna do a knit stitch. And if you have your reference picture of your sweater handy, which is something that I like to do as well, you're gonna notice that when we, when you look at the jacket, when it's the side that's facing everyone, so this being our right side, this is the side that's going to be facing outward, you're going to see that it's the green square and there's a line, a black line that's going to come across here. That's okay because, you know, that's what's in the original sweater. And you're going to get that when you do a knit stitch on the wrong side. So this is the wrong side of our work, right side of our work, because this is what's going to be showing. This is technically the inside of our jacket. And when we change our color, you're going to see that when we do our knit stitches, that black line will appear here. And another thing about the seed stitch is that for it to get the pattern that it should and to look the way that it should and get the texture right, you should have an odd number of stitches. Now you're probably thinking, hey girl, we have 16 stitches, that's an even number. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to decrease a stitch. And I like to usually do it around the middle because when you do it on the side, sometimes it gets awkward and it looks like a little, a little jump. So I like to do it in the middle because that just makes it more seamless. So what we're going to do when we change our colors, like always, going in as if we're doing a knit stitch, so from the front to the back. And instead of using this piece, we're going to bring in our new color, wrap it around. We're going to grab a hold of these just so they don't get loose and we're gonna do a knit stitch. And then we're just gonna tug till it's okay, not too tight, not too loose. And then we're gonna keep going. And like I mentioned before, make sure we grab our right piece. Like I mentioned before, I like to do a few stitches before I actually tie these two together. Before I tie those little tail pieces that appear together. Now, it's okay if you kinda catch the other color. We're not perfect here, we're all learning. And sometimes because these needles are so sharp, they like to catch the string and kind of pull it out. So we just have to be a little more careful. So here we are. And once we get kind of in the middle, All right, so here, this is where we're gonna decrease our stitch. Now, what you're gonna do is usually, what we do is obviously with the knit stitch, we go to the next stitch. To decrease a stitch, we're gonna go not to this one, but this second stitch, and we're gonna go through as if we're knit stitching. So you're gonna go in from the front to the back, catching both of those stitches. You see how both of them are, are caught? And then we're gonna bring our yarn around and just do a knit stitch. And now those two stitches are now underneath this one. And then we just keep going. Now 
We just keep going with our knit stitches until the end. Make sure that's okay. And now we have, oh, make sure we're so we don't fall off there. Now we have our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 stitches. Now we have 15 stitches. And of course we left these tail pieces. We don't want to forget about those because our work might come apart. And we're just going to knot it like we did last time to secure that. And later on, when we need to, I'm going to teach you guys how to actually hide those so those don't pop up obviously on your finished piece and we have a clean inside. So now we have, like in the sweater, that nice clean black line on the front side of our work because this is the side that's going to be showing on the outside not the inside so now that we have that line we kind of have a guide and know hey this is the front of the piece and this is the back so this next stitch which as I mentioned before is called a seed stitch and that's simply knit one so you do one knit stitch and then a purl stitch. So we're gonna bring our yarn forward, the yarn that's connected to the ball, and we're gonna go in through the front, bring our yarn around, and to the back. Kind of went over that in my first video, so if you want a more slow, kind of maybe a little more explaining refresher, you can always go back and see that. So now we're here doing our pattern. And this one might take a little more concentration just to make sure that you don't accidentally do two knit stitches in a row or two purl stitches in a row. And since we are doing two squares today, if you do need to take a break, that's totally okay. That's not a problem. We're going at our own pace. And even if it does take a little bit longer, that's totally okay because we know in the end, it's gonna be a really, really amazing result. All right, so we're coming into the end of our first row here and we should be ending on a knit stitch. So yeah, but that's okay. It's okay if it's not completely perfect. <laughs> we're all learning here, we're all still beginners. So we're going, we're making sure that this, so we start off with the neck, and then pearl. I'm gonna make sure that I have enough yarn here Make sure we have it around so we're not tugging at our yarn ball because then it gets all stiff and kind of annoying. It's knit pearl. And we're going back into the knit stitch. And there we have our second row. Okay, now we're coming into our last two rows, and we're going to be doing the same pattern that we've been doing for our entire square, our, our entire square, which is knit one, purl one, and then our last stitch is going to be knit one. So we're going in, doing our same pattern. 
that we're probably very familiar with, at least to this point, with doing it continuously for all the rows. And this is a slight variation from the pattern that's used in the official one that was released, but it still gives it the similar texture of the original sweater, which is what we like. And now, for one last time, we're going to turn our work and do the back side. stitch and the same as before we're gonna keep it on the needle don't cut the thread because tomorrow we'll be adding our final square which is yellow but that one I'm putting in a separate video because we're gonna learn how to shape the collar I've also included the pattern written out so you can see exactly what we were doing so it was knit one purl one until we get to the very last stitch and end with a knit stitch so as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or message me in any of my social media. Uh, like and subscribe this video so you can keep up. And see you next time.